Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to give you a Cypripedium Orchid update. Um, I like to do these updates once a year, maybe twice a year, and they're just looking really good right now. It is that time of year that all my guys are out in bloom. I just have moved them out and we're, they're on top of the hot tub right now to give you guys a better look at them. And not only did I want to show them off for you, but I wanted to just go over a little bit of care notes, specifically with watering these guys. So, beautiful plants. I find them very easy to take care of. And one of the biggest things with them is going to be the water for them. So, I'm just going to slowly move the camera around. And this guy here is um, Emil. He's a hybrid. This one here is, I believe, a hybrid with Kentucky Pink. Um, this one here is a species pubescence. Just about out in bloom, but not quite for you. This is one of my favorite hybrids, Tillman. has a wonderful smell to it. My Regenia, and not quite out. Then there's a nice Dactorizal here as well. This is um, Maculata. Not a Cypripedium, but um, beautiful leaves on it. It will have flowers out in a few months, and um, but until then it's just looking good, and it kind of lives with the Cypripediums. But like I say, I wanted this video to have a little bit of purpose too, so I wanted to discuss watering these guys with you. Um, it's one of the hardest things to get right for me, and it changes per season. It changes for what these guys are doing. So when the, the plants are like this, they actually take quite a bit of water. Um, the water loss from the leaves is, is huge. So this time of year, I water them quite a bit, um, probably a couple times a week and I'll show you the media. It's, it's quite a loose, airy, sandy, there's some turfus in there, there's a bit of perlite in there, a little bit of peat, but it's very fast draining for them. It does dry out quite quickly. They, um, they like to be moist, but they don't like to be wet. They don't like to be waterlogged, so they need to be in a well-draining soil there. Um, other than that, I found this guy in particular, there's a lot in the pot right now. He takes extra water. I found him the other day all wilted, even though it wasn't that hot out. Uh, just due to lack of water. So when they have leaves like this, you need to water them more. Of course, it depends how many um, growths are in the pot and how many leaves they really have. This one, same size pot, doesn't take nearly as much water. But um, overall, when they're in bloom, this time of year is when they need to be watered the most. Now you're gonna continue that watering all through the um, early summer and by the beginning of late summer these guys are going to start to look a little peaky they're going to start to turn yellow um, sadly they're going to go dormant as the august heat starts to hit and then they're going to be dormant sort of by september october fully dormant as you start to see them turn yellow that is when i start to cut back on the watering because all the water is um, lost through the leaves on these guys it's not really lost anywhere else the tubers themselves are designed to suck up water no matter what so they start sucking up water no matter what. And as the leaves start to disappear and start to not work properly, not photosynthesize, they, the tubers don't have anywhere for the water to go. It doesn't have anywhere to transpire out. That was really the word I was looking for earlier, transpire. So forget my um, whatever I said before, we're looking for the word transpire. So anyways, as they start to go dormant, they take less and less water until there's no green leaves left. And that is when we basically stop watering them for the year. Here on the west coast, um, there's lots of rain in the winter, but there is not much like frozen temperatures. It's always above zero, but really wet. So I have to be very careful that in the winter time, these guys, the tubers don't continue to suck up water. So that's why here they go fairly dry, almost the, the immediate self, you can like pick it up and just sort of it tumbles back down out of your fingers without um, getting your fingers wet at all. If I was to keep watering, those tubers that are designed to continue to suck up water would have nowhere to put the water, it would have nowhere to transpire out, and the tubers would start to go rotten. So we want to make sure that um, by the time there's nowhere for the water to transpire out, there's um, very little water for the tubers to suck up. In the wild, these guys come from colder climates um, where the water is actually locked up in ice. So even though the tubers in the wild are trying to suck up moisture they really can't because it's, it's locked up in ice so they get that sort of drying effect anyways no moisture can enter the tubers so that is sort of how i do it there all winter i try to keep them relatively dry 
a medium amount of humidity. Here, unfortunately, humidity is quite high. Um, and even when these guys were dormant on this last one on the email up here, I'll swing the camera again. I know I'm just like tilting it everywhere. On this guy up here, I actually lost a few um, of this year's growth points due to rot because it was just too wet. I am I watered one too many times late in the season and all down there, I can see this year's growth points starting to poke up and they actually went a little bit moldy. So coincidentally, it's also the only one I didn't repot last year. This one is definitely due for a repot this year. So that might have had um, something to do with it as well. But then in the springtime, we don't start to really water until these tubers start to sprout. And when they start to sprout, they sprout quite quickly and you start to up the water quite quickly as well. So um, it doesn't take many months or many weeks for them to become this size from um, breaking dormancy. So all of a sudden the watering is, is really picked up again quite quickly. But anyways, that is just me rambling about um, my Cypripedium watering and how they transpire. Very important to realize that they transpire. Now, one other thing I will talk about is the worst thing that can happen to these guys right now would be if one of these broke. Say we dropped the pot and the leaves were gone, but the plant wasn't dormant. You wouldn't want to keep watering because that tuber, which is constantly trying to suck up water, would have no leaves to um, export the water to. And even though it's summertime and you should be watering it frequently, if this plant was to have no leaves because of damage, uh, we would definitely reduce the watering accordingly cross our fingers and hope for the best and we just sort of sit it on the back side in a shady spot and and just forget about it but we're not going to talk about any damage to these beauties because they look great and I'm not planning on dropping them so anyways I hope you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe to my channel as always thanks for watching